seated. Before I introduce you to my beautiful family, I wanna take a moment to honor your amazing pastors, Pastor Sharon and Pastor Steve, two heroes in my life and in my husband's life. We've been leading our church for 10 years now, but even before we stepped into that moment, your pastors were cheering us on, speaking life to us, praying for us, and inviting us to sit at their table. This church is literally known all over the world. Your pastors are respected and known all over the world, but they have always made a place for couples coming alongside them, coming behind them, and I'm just so thankful for your legacy. I'm so thankful for your faith. I'm so thankful for you and your husband. Y'all have marked our life, and I'm honored to be here today. I'm gonna introduce you to my family. I have three babies and a hot husband. His name's Earl, and we have a photo, and we'll be married for 24 years, which I can't even believe that. Time goes by so fast. On the end is my son, Grayson. He's a he loves Legend of Zelda and just all things video games. Any parents might know what I'm talking about. Then our youngest little girl, her name is Elle. She is six years old and she is an angel. And I know she doesn't look like me, but she is my baby girl and I'm obsessed with her. And then my oldest son, Parker, who is 16, who is just testing us regularly. He just got his learner's permit to drive. So he's getting the hang of driving. He hasn't quite um, mastered it. So every time we're in the car together, it's just a by faith moment. But I try to keep my cool. I put my sunglasses on so he can't see how freaked out I am. Um, but I literally send out Hail Mary texts to all my friends when we get in the car with him and say, just pray, just pray, just pray. Our lives are in his hand. But he's a great guy and I'm thankful to get to be their mom outside of being married. It's my favorite post. And we get to lead a great church in Dallas, Texas. But I'm just excited to be with you with y'all today because this church is amazing. Your pastors and team are incredible. But as I was thinking about and praying about what I should share with this amazing house, I was thinking and reflecting on this last year. And this last year has just came swinging for all of us. Um, there were days when we felt like we were losing our minds and there were other days when we felt like I got the hang of this. But I remember during the time when we were all at home, you know when you couldn't go to the places you're used to going to, you couldn't get on planes like you wanted to. If you wanted to go get your hair straightened, or the girls know what I'm talking about, or go get your nails done, there weren't lots of options available. So during that time, we all had to shift. We had to shift from church in person to church online. We had to shift. Some of us became school teachers for our kids because some of our schools weren't open, which was really fascinating because our youngest, to get her to concentrate on Zoom was just a hot mess. It just tested our patience. So many things shifted and changed all around us. But God was with us, even in the midst of the shifting, even in the midst of the changes. I remember one time when my hair was just crazy. Okay, as you figured out, I'm a sister. And you may not know this, but sometimes our hair takes a little bit longer to get to the place that I, at least I wanted it to get. Some of you can rock the just fresh, natural look, and it's a vibe, and it is amazing, and you're stunning. But on me, I just look, it's just not a look for me. So I couldn't go to the place that I normally go because everything was closed. So I had to shift and guess who I tagged in to become my hairstylist, my husband. And look what happened when he, I have a picture to show you what happened when he took his hands and put them on my hair. It just wasn't a good look. I was proud of him. He, he literally, okay, so this is him literally putting dye on my roots. I'm not kidding. And that's how my hair turned out. It's not supposed to look like that. But he shifted and became a stylist. And he is the strongest. You know, he's 6'3", he has biceps, and he's just this manly man. But during the pandemic, he learned to do my hair. He also, y'all even going to believe me, he also learned to put on my eyelashes. I'm not kidding. That is a good man. Find you a man who's patient enough when you can't get your lashes done, little self-care. He became my self-care, and I was so thankful. But all that to say, we had to shift. We had to change. We had to pivot. We had to um, address life in a completely different way because the world around us was changing. But so many times, even in the shift, even in the changes, God is shifting things even now in your life and in my life. Our world is constantly changing. And I think sometimes we fight the change. We fight the shift instead of saying, God, I'll go where you go. If the cloud is moving, I'm going to move with the cloud. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. If you call me to shift, I'm going to shift. But time and time again, we fight shift. There are some very amazing popular businesses that back in the day, they fought shift, and now we hardly ever talk about them. 
One in particular. Okay, older people know what I'm talking about. Younger people follow along. Before there was Netflix, believe it or not, there was a world without Netflix. There was a world where you couldn't stream movies on your phone, on your computer. You had to go to this store called Blockbuster. You walk in, so it's called Blockbuster. You walk in, and it's a store filled with movies. So if you wanted to watch a movie at home or have a movie night, you would, go, you would drive. You'd have to leave your house, drive to the video store called Blockbuster. You walk in, and you see movies like this. These, this, is, this is called a um, VHS, for those of you who don't know. And this is how you would watch movies. And you would put them in a machine called a VCR. Yep. And sometimes you would get a busted, broken tape, and your whole movie night would be ruined. But when you walked into the store, there was just aisles and aisles of movies, but you would open the box, and sometimes the movie wouldn't be inside the box, so then you couldn't watch the movie. For real, I'm literally not kidding. Blockbuster was the place. It was literally, there was one, they were all over the world. They had, I have written down here, they had over 84,000 employees. They had over 9,000 stores, but the world went digital. They weren't willing to, what's the word, shift. And so now they have three employees, one flagship store that is the only store, and it's actually a museum and an Airbnb, and you can rent movies there, but they only have three employees now because they didn't shift. God is calling us to shift. He's calling us to change. The cloud is moving. He does not want us to be left behind. We have to move with him. Some things will stay the same. As God continues to pour out vision through your amazing pastors, we want to be willing to shift with them. When I was praying over this house, I felt like the Lord showed me some seeds that were planted in the ground over 20 years ago by your pastors and this team. And he showed me that those seeds have been marinating because faith has been poured out on those seeds. Sacrifice has been poured out on those seeds. Tears have been sowed out, poured out onto those seeds. And he also showed me that as a church, you're about to step into a time of supernatural harvest and blessing and breakthrough. And as he fills your leaders and pastors with vision, we have to shift with them. We can't question the change. We can't question the process. We have to say, I trust you. I'm with you. Those seeds of faithfulness that have been sown years ago, I want to be a part of the harvest. I want to be a part of the miracles. I want to be a part of the breakthrough. This church is just getting started. It may be over 20 years old, but it is just getting started, and the best days are ahead, but guess what? God has to renew our minds, and we have to shift. Another place that didn't shift, Borders Bookstore. Before there was Kindle, before there was books on audio, before you could get all your books on Amazon, there was this very big store called Borders. And you would go in, you would get a latte, you would look at magazines, and that's how you got books. But guess what? The digital world came. There was these two college guys. So if you think two college guys are starting something, you think nothing can get, you know, nothing can come against that because they're young, they're fresh, they're innovative. But guess what? They didn't switch to digital so they had to sell all the stores to Barnes and Noble. And now when you drive by Borders, they're repurposed. They didn't shift. Say they didn't shift. Another process that didn't shift was Kodak. So Kodak was Kodak. Kodak was before Instagram. Before Instagram, instead of taking all your photos on your phone, like we all do, I have hundreds and hundreds of photos on my phone, so much so that I always need new storage. But before that time, you would have a camera, you would have to buy film, put it in the camera. Your camera would help you keep track of how many photos you had left. But the world was going digital. Kodak was afraid that if they went digital that people would stop buying their film and stop buying their cameras, so they didn't shift. So guess what? We don't talk about Kodak that often. They came across something called Ophoto. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. It was the predecessor to Instagram. But because they didn't want people to stop buying their cameras, they didn't shift, they didn't change, and now I read somewhere that they're going into pharmaceuticals. Y'all, we have to shift. We have to move with the cloud. God has called us for such a time as this. He has a plan and purpose for our lives, for our families, and so as you step into this new school year, God is saying, shift. As you lead your company or your business, God is saying, shift. As you go to school and 
before, say, last school year, you were passive, you didn't stand up for yourself, you just went along with the crowd, God today is saying, you know what? You need to shift, you need to stand up for what's right, you need to speak the truth in love because I've called you, I have you on assignment in that school, I have you on assignment in that business and I need you to shift because I'm doing something and I'm not in the past, I'm actually in the future, so don't fight it, I need you to move with me because I'm moving and I'm changing. (laughs) Same thing happened in the Bible. All throughout scripture, there were shifts. All throughout scripture, there were changes. Go with me to Joshua 1, verses 1 and 2. We're going to camp out and just learn and glean from Joshua because Joshua had to shift. And it was not at a convenient time. Sometimes you have to change and be willing to move and take ground even when the sun is not shining Even when your favorite song is not playing, you have to step into it by faith. And that's what we can learn from Joshua. Joshua 1, verses 1 and 2. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I'm giving them. So you think as Moses tees up Joshua, you would think that he would be stepping into leadership at the most opportune time. You would think that Moses would be there with Joshua saying, Joshua, you got this. You're about to shift. You're about to transition. I'm going to be cheering you on. I'm going to be sending you videos and text messages, hyping you up. I'm going to be praying for you on the days when the crowd is quiet. I'm going to be with you for coffees to debrief after you speak and address about the future. I got you. But guess what? Joshua had to shift in transition after a death. And not only did he have to do it after a death, the people had been mourning for over 30 days. Just sadness, heaviness. Moses fled for 40 years. So that's all everyone knew was Moses and all the great things that Moses did. But Joshua had to step outside of himself. He had to trust God. He had to do it afraid and trust that God had gone before him. And I feel like that as we shift, we have to tell ourselves, my old mindset for today, Moses is dead. My old ways of doing things, Moses is dead. I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna trust God that he's gonna meet me in this next season. I'm not gonna hold on to the past. The only things that I'm gonna keep from the past are prayer, faith, worship, community, giving, showing up. But other than that, I'm open, God. Use me and available, and I'm available. And I feel like he is asking us today, would you be open? Would you be available? Would you shift with me? Because as the cloud is moving, I have something for you on the other side, but I need you to shift. And yes, it's wild that we are called to shift when things are not amazing. Our world right now is is, is wild, but God is still calling us to shift. That's what he did for Joshua, and he's telling us to do that today. Joshua had big shoes to feel, fill, like I said. The people have came off of mourning for over 30 days. Joshua was a former slave, but he also was a survivor. And his dad, even when they were in bondage, when he named him, his name means the Lord is salvation or Yahweh saves. And I was thinking about what situation you could be facing, and maybe the name is depression. Maybe the name is bankruptcy. Maybe the name is failure. Maybe the name is, um, I can never measure up. But God is, maybe the name is sickness. But God is asking you to rename your situation by faith and to trust him with the promise. So if you have a child right now who's struggling in school, I encourage you, name that child warrior. If you're dealing with sickness right now, I encourage you to rename your situation health. If you're dealing with fear right now, I encourage you to rename your situation faith. When you speak the word of God over yourself, when you declare his goodness, his grace, his strength, his peace, it changes the atmosphere. (laughs) Moses is dead. God is giving you a new name in this season, but he's asking you to own it and to answer to it. Go with me to verse three. And I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the, Negne- from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. I will give you the land where your foot sets. That is a word. Wherever you go, God has given you that land. So when you walk into that meeting, 
God has given you that land. When you walk into your toddler's room and things are crazy and you feel like, God, why did you pick me to parent these kids? God's saying, I gave you that land. When you walk into the hospital or, and get a doctor's report that you're not pleased with, you tell yourself, you listen to the doctors and nurses, but under your breath, you're like, God, you've given me this land. God, I do not have a spirit of fear, but I have power and love and a sound mind. When you're in an argument with your spouse, You say, God, you have given us this land as a family. We are not gonna shrink back. This marriage is not going to end in divorce. I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna show up in my small group. I'm gonna stay planted in church because I know that you've given us this land. I know that legacy is on the other side of this decision right now, so I'm gonna look to you because the Bible says where my feet step, that land belongs to me. So thank you that you've given me this land for my family. He also says in verse five, No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. Over and over again, God is reminding him that I'm with you. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. And he's telling us that today, that as we shift, as we look ahead to the future, as we step into all that God's called us to do, he's saying, I'm not gonna fail you. I'm not gonna give up on you. I'm not gonna leave you. People may have left you in your life, but guess what? I'm not them. I am not gonna fail you. I'm not gonna abandon you. I am with you. I have gone ahead of you. This last year, I've had to remind myself that over and over again. I've had to shift as a wife. I've been married for over 24 years, and I feel like I'm a great wife. Like, I love being a wife. I feel like I have it on lock. But guess what? My husband's been changing. He's been changing. He's been evolving. So I've had to shift with him. I could have kept my own old mindset of, well, I've been doing it great for the last 24 years. Why do I need to change? Why do I need to learn something new? Why do I need to? He even said, because he loves to read, so he's always reading books on marriage, always reading books on how to be a better husband. But if I were to be honest with you, I don't read books on how to be a better wife (laughs) because I feel like I'm good at it. But he challenged me and he said, babe, I am constantly growing as a husband. I want you to grow as a wife. And at first I took it personally. At first I didn't have the saved Christian response like, oh honey, you're so right. I do wanna grow. I do wanna evolve. I was like, wait. (laughs) But then I got saved again and I realized that we are on a journey and I want to grow. So I needed to shift. I've had to shift as a parent. I had to shift to doing school online. I've had to shift with um, our teenage son. He's 16, so he goes places now that we're not with him. He's around people that we don't always know everyone. And so before, if there was a play date, I knew the moms, I knew the kids, I knew everything that's going on, but we've had to kind of loosen our grip a little and allow him to have freedom so that he can build trust with us. So I've had to shift as a mother of a teenager. And it has not been easy, but I have to say, God, I'm moving with the cloud. My son is growing up. He's only gonna be with us for two more years before he goes away to college, so I gotta shift. But you know what I do? Since God says he's given me the ground, even when my son is going off somewhere with his friends, guess what, I go old school. I go into his bedroom. I play worship music and I'm like, Father, I thank you that this is your son. I thank you that you have a plan and purpose for his life. I thank you that whatever he's gonna be exposed to at this gathering, I thank you that he's gonna stand tall. I thank you that you're gonna remind him that he's the head and not the tail. I thank you that there's a call of God upon his life. I thank you that he's not gonna settle. I thank you that you're with him wherever he goes. We have to take authority over situations. We have to remember that it's land that God has given us and we have to shift and step into it and not go back and hold the past and mourn over the past. We have to step into the future with the grace and strength that God has given us. He says here, I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. No one will be able to stand against you. No report, no text message, no DM, no financial report will be able to stand against you. Verse six, be strong. Over and over again, he keeps saying be strong. You know why? Because he knows he's fearful. He knows he has big shoes to fill. And at times we can all be very fearful and feel like, God, why did you pick me for this situation? So today, from a girl from Dallas, Texas, God is reminding you over and over again in verse six, be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. You are the one. You are the one to lead at your school. 
You are the one to lead the small group. You are the one to lead the team that God's trusted you with. You are the one to lead your family. You are the one to embrace change. You are the one. Over and over again, God is saying that. I've picked you. I've called you. I've set you apart. And I think this last year, because of all the pain we've all had to endure for different reasons, we forgot. We forgot that we were the one. We forgot that he picked us. We forgot that we were part of a great cloud of witnesses in the bodies of believers. We forgot what it meant to be planted in God's house. We forgot what it meant to show up early and leave late. We forgot what it meant to believe the best. But today, I believe that a new spirit of adoption is coming over all of us and we're gonna walk out this calling that God has for us as sons and daughters, not with an orphan spirit, but with a spirit that says, I'm called, I'm chosen, I'm set apart. This is the place where my life was changed. This was the place that I accepted Christ. This is the place that I met some of my very best friends. This is the place that I have some amazing memories. And so I'm gonna be on the front lines. And as the cloud moves and as things shift, I'm gonna be a champion of all the shift. And I'm gonna be praying through shift. I'm gonna be praying through transition. And I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna give my very best because this place has given me that's very best. My life was wrecked and transformed by a church just like this. I was in college, working at a clothing store. I was partying constantly. I didn't know my value. I didn't know my worth. I, didn't, I was raised by a single mom. I didn't have a good example of what a two-parent family looked like. I literally was just selling myself short. And at work, I was putting away clothes, and my coworker kept inviting me to church, a church just like this. Kept saying, I want you to come with me. I want you to come with me. I kept saying, nope, because I'd go out, party the night before, and then cancel. But one Sunday, everybody say one Sunday. I said yes, and my life was wrecked and transformed. But I'm so thankful that I was a part of a church that was willing to shift, was willing to make way for new girls that were walking in the door so that my life could be radically changed. And I'm talking to you today because I was a part of a church that was willing to shift. So I need us to go first for the other Oni, because the other people, this is such a generational church. So what we see today is not just for today, it's also for the future, but we have to shift. We have to renew our minds because I am so thankful for the examples of marriages that I got to see. I'm so thankful for the older women that took me to coffee, that poured into me. I'm so thankful for the girls who taught me how to read my Bible, who told me that I didn't value myself, who told me that Jesus Christ saw me, adored me, and that I did not have to set I'm so thankful for the house of God. And that's why I want to spend all my days building God's house, staying planted in God's house. And so as God shifts, we got to shift with him. As the cloud moves, we have to move with him. He says, be strong and courageous for you are the one. He said the same thing to Gideon. Gideon had to step into leadership. He was being bullied by the Midianites, didn't feel qualified. He was the youngest. He was the weakest. But God said, listen to this, Judges 6, 4. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, go in the strength you have and deliver Israel from the power of Midian. Am I not sending you? God has gone before you in your next season. God has gone before me in my next season and he's calling you even when you feel the weakest. He's calling you even when you feel inadequate. He's calling you when your story has not ended the way that you want your story to end. He still called you. He's called you when you feel it. He's called you when you're crying. He's called you when you have goosebumps. He's called you when you feel nothing. He's called you when you walk into the office and you feel like everyone's gossiping about you. He calls you when you're deployed. He calls you when you're on a jog. He calls you when you're in the car. He calls you when you're leading your family. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. This last year, we have all had a steady diet of the news and social media, and I feel like it's actually tried to reprogram us to forget who we are. And I'm here to remind us today who we are in Christ. I'm here to remind us today that God is saying I'm shifting. I need my church to move with me. My glory was there, but it's also ahead, and I need you to come with me. But we can't be the people in the back complaining, saying, oh, I don't want to change. I don't want to shift. I want to hold on to these bad habits. I want to hold on to these bad ways. No, we want what he has for us more than anything as our, our life's dependent on it. But we have to shift, and we have to step into it, and we don't need to be apologetic about it. We don't need to be apologetic. On your car, blast that worship music and say, God, this is a day that you have made. 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. Before you have to have a confrontational conversation with someone, pray, God, go before me. Strengthen me. Before you have to make some major decisions because you employ a lot of people, say, God, I'm shifting, but I need you to meet me in this shift. Verse seven, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in all you do. That is our response, to be strong, to be courageous, to keep the word of God in front of us, to put down our phones unless it's for the word of God because this, our phones have made us feel insecure. It's made us feel fat. It's made us feel like we don't have enough abs or biceps. It's made us feel like our family doesn't measure up. It's made some of us feel like we can't walk into church because we don't have it all together. We gotta put our phones down for a second. We gotta pick up the word of God and say, God, I feel insecure right now. What does your word say about me? God, I have to make a big decision for my company. What does your word say right now? God, I feel inadequate as a mother, as a parent. What does your word say right now? God, the news is swirling all around me and I feel paralyzed with fear. What does your word say? Your word says God has not given me a spirit of fear, but he's given me power. He's given me a sound mind. He's given me a hope for the future. Let's recite the word of God. Let's write it on our mirrors. Let's put it on sticky notes. You're gonna do what you gotta do so that you can stand tall and that you can shift. Joshua had to shift during a time of mourning. He had to step into a season that he had very big shoes to fill. But as you read the story over and over again, he refers to Moses. He talks about and honors Moses. He talks about the future, but he also remembers the word of God and the things that Moses taught him. I love this. We gotta stop thinking about what does the world say and we have to ask ourselves, God, what are you saying? Study the book of instruction continually. That's the Bible for us. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey and the band can come and everything written in on it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Verse nine, over and over again, be strong and courageous. 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 This is my command. It's not even a choice. We're called to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This last season leading our churches, our church looks a lot like this church. It looks like heaven. We have people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, and it was very difficult and still is difficult leading a church through this wild season that our world finds, us in, finds itself in. So I had to decide, am I gonna shift? Or am I gonna go in a corner and cry because people are offended or because people are not showing up to their post? Am I gonna just throw in the towel and question, God, did you call us to Dallas, Texas? Because right now it's not going how I planned. Am I gonna go into a deep, dark hole and forget about the call of God, forget about the dream he gave my husband, forget about the word, forget about the blessings of our pastors who sent us? I had to remind myself, my life was changed in God's house. God's called us to this city. God's called us for such a time as this. You have to remind yourself of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. The things that we need to bring with us as we shift, as we look to heaven and say, God, I can't do this without you. You're my only hope. You're my only chance. I'm looking to you. There's some things we need to bring with us. If we are packing for a trip to shift in our mindsets, we need to remember, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. We need to pack with us, and you bring this with you to work every day, you bring this with you as you're with your kids, you bring this with you as you go into a meeting. I got my, pack, my checklist, I'm gonna be strong and courageous. Don't, I'm not gonna be afraid or discouraged. And we have to remember that God is with us. He is with you on the good days. He is with you when you're making all kinds of money. He's also with you when you lose your job. He's with you when you have to bury someone too soon. He's with you at the birth of a loved one. He's with you through every single season, every single valley. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is cheering you on. He's saying, don't quit. Don't ring the bell. There's more on the inside of you. There's more in the future for this church. But I need a group of people. I need a group of people who are gonna say, sign me up all over again. I need a group of people that say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I see in my spirit that God is clearing a path, a path of breakthrough.
you. I 